I love this movie. So, fun fact about me, my birthday is the day before Halloween. So every year for my entire life, it's been people giving me cake on one day and then people giving me candy on the next. Cake, candy, presents, costumes. I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda awesome. But as a celebration of my fortuitous day of birth being so close to the greatest holiday ever conceived by a mortal race, I watch The Nightmare Before Christmas every year, at least once, sometime around the end of October. I just love this movie. It really isn't something that I can like academically defend. It, this is just one of my childhood loves. No matter how much I watch it, it never gets old. And with that love comes all the musical trivia of the film. So we could talk about how the head and the bass is actually modeled after Danny Elfman, or how Elfman is actually the voice behind Jack whenever he's singing. Or we could talk about how the song Making Christmas has the melody that's actually modeled after the Dies Irae, which is a piece of music that a lot of composers have used to symbolically and thematically represent death. So when you hear that Dies Irae melody while the citizens of Halloween Town are creating their own Christmas, the music is actually telling us that they're killing Christmas. Or we could talk about how this film is scored more like an opera or an operetta as opposed to a straight musical, because a lot of the music seems to be more or less diegetic, like how we see the mayor humming This Is Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> and the music tends to organically evolve from the dialogue taking place in the scene, which is more in the lines of an operetta. We could talk about all that, but after being out for over 20 years, I figured we could talk about a conspiracy theory that I've had for the last half decade regarding the finale of this masterpiece. Now, I warn you, the music theory you're about to witness is tenuous at best, so make sure there aren't any professors around, grab an aluminum foil hat, and follow me through this tree. Okay, so just to recap, Jack just saved Sally and Santa. Santa's flown around and saved Christmas, and Jack is returning to Halloween Town. And the finale begins with this. <laughs> So this is the same piece of music we hear at the beginning of the film, except it's in a major key signature. So just a refresher course for any newbies in here. There are different combinations of notes that we call scales. We use the notes in these scales to write melodies and harmonies. And there are literally hundreds of scales out there, so we categorize them in broader terms to make it easier to keep track of them all. And the two most popular scales out there are major and minor. Major looks like this, and minor looks like this. You'll see that the only difference between major and minor are these three notes here. Notes number three, six, and seven. It's okay if you can't read music, just know that these two scales are different because of these three notes. So when I say that something is in a major or minor key signature, what I mean is that they're written using a major or minor scale. So in the very beginning of the film, we hear this is Halloween and it's in a minor key. But when we hear it start up at the finale, it starts in a major key before it goes back into a minor key when everybody starts singing along. Now this is really important because most of the film takes place in Halloween Town and is written in a minor key. The only part that's really written in a major key signature is the song What's This when Jack is in Christmas Town. That's because culturally we've always associated major keys with sounding happy and minor keys with sounding sad. So overall, by scoring most of Halloween Town in a minor key and Christmas Town in a major key, it reflects how Jack feels about these two places. The story explores Jack's boredom and sudden inability to enjoy his life in Halloween Town, where everything's written in minor. But when he discovers Christmas Town, he gets a sudden bolt of energy and enthusiasm to discover this new world, and all of the music we hear is in major. But when he returns to Halloween Town, we go back to hearing a lot of minor key signatures reflecting his perception of home. So when Jack returns to Halloween Town, having saved Christmas and is newly invigorated as the Pumpkin King, the music briefly opens in a major key, which kind of reflects his newfound joy for his position in Halloween Town. But when the citizens start singing, it goes back to the standard minor key until Santa makes it snow and everyone starts singing What's This in its major key, just like it was in Christmas Town. But then we get the most important part. Jack joining Sally in a duet of Sally's song. Now buckle in, because this is where my conspiracy theory goes off the rails. Sally's song is minor, specifically E minor, which means it's a minor scale that begins on the note E. But at a few key points in the song, Elfman decided to use the Phrygian scale. Now the Phrygian scale is less common than the major or minor scales by far. So we know the difference between major and minor are these three notes. Well, check out the difference between minor and Phrygian. Phrygian is one note away, but that one note is very important because without it, it's just minor, not Phrygian. And you can hear that really clearly in Sally's song. I sense there's something in the wind. She lands on that one note that makes Phrygian sound Phrygian. It's like the one note that gives Phrygian its stank. It's the stank note, like the Phrygian stank note. I sense there's something in the wind.
But check it out. What's really important and critical to my disorganized ravings is that you only ever really hear it with this much emphasis at one other point in the film, during the town meeting. If I'm not completely crazy, you can hear a lot of phrases resolving to that Phrygian stank note, or at least harmonized with that Phrygian sound. There were objects so peculiar they were not to be believed, all around things to tantalize my brain. A thing I've ever seen, and as hard as I tried, I can't seem to describe. The whole thing starts with a box and hang it like this on the wall. And the best, I must confess, I have saved for the last for the ruler of this Christmas land. And I've also heard it told that that is something to behold like a lobster, huge and red. Furthermore, I was only able to hear it when Jack was trying to describe things to the townsfolk, but never when they were interrupting him. Which is interesting because it creates a contrast between the townsfolk, who typically sing in minor, and Jack, who is now using Phrygian harmonies. It musically expresses his inability to relate to the townsfolk and completely communicate his ideas. All of the townsfolk, that is to say, except for one, because that passage that you hear from Sally's song that's used as her leitmotif is also Phrygian. Also, and I'll admit that this next part is stretching it, even for my frantic ravings, Sally's song is written in E minor, and aside from Sally's song, there are only a few other instances of this film that were also written in E minor, as far as I could tell. Uh, there was this portion of Jack's Lament, uh, the end of Jack's Obsession, and the very end of Poor Jack for like maybe a measure. But like I said, I think it's stretching it even for me. Uh, nevertheless, when you look at that Phrygian sound that saturates Jack's phrases during the town meeting, which you can also find a little bit here and there in Jack's Lament, and I think shows up once or twice in Jack's Obsession, and you can even consider the fact that Jack is the only other person who really sings in E minor while he's by himself, when we hear Sally say, Jack, I know how you there's actually kind of a musical precedent for it. Her song is in E minor and uses those Phrygian sounds, and as far as I can tell, she's the only other person in the film who does both of those things aside from Jack. So in the finale, when Jack is singing with Sally, it's Sally's song, using those Phrygian sounds, and even though it might not be in E minor, he's still musically acknowledging that she really understands him. My dearest friend, if you don't mind, but what I think might be my favorite part is that they end on something called a Picardy Third. Okay, so Bach was a guy who lived a long time ago, and he used to write a lot of cantatas, which were choir pieces for four parts. And some of these pieces would be in major and some in minor, but no matter whether he wrote them in major or minor, he almost always finished the piece in major. So when there was a cantata in a minor key, he would still probably finish it with a major chord. And when Jack and Sally finish their duet, they finish on a major chord. We're simply meant to Which is significant. Jack's use of these Phrygian harmonies reflects his alienated feeling when the townspeople don't really understand him. And arguably, this is something that he's felt since the beginning of the film, because there are some of those Phrygian harmonies during Jack's lament. But when he travels to Christmas Town, we suddenly hear him singing in a major key and he sounds happy. And throughout the film, it almost seems like his new discovery of Christmas has made him happy. Except that it doesn't work out for him, the townsfolk still don't understand him, and he isn't able to pull off Christmas, and it leaves him depressed. But his failure leads him to rediscover his passion for Halloween, and that only ends up putting him back where he began reflected in the citizens of Halloween Town singing This Is Halloween, the tune from the beginning of the film, in the standard minor key, even after Jack saves the day and the orchestra has introduced that piece of music in a major key. Because what Jack really needed was to find someone who understood him for who he is in order for him to actually be happy. So the finale is a perfect conclusion to Jack's journey of self-discovery. It wasn't Christmas that would make him happy, nor accepting his position as the Pumpkin King, it was finding someone who understood him. But if some music theory is reading in between the lines, then this is me writing my own book. Because using major and minor key signatures to make something sound happy or sad is something people have been doing for literally hundreds of years. And the town meeting and Sally's song aren't the only two instances of Phrygian passages or chords in this film. I was able to see some trace of those Phrygian sounds in a majority of the songs in this film. The town meeting and Sally's song are just the most prominent and noticeable examples of the Phrygian sounds that I could find. Chances are that Elfman wanted to create a contrast between the dark Halloween town and the brighter Christmas town, so he wrote Halloween Town in a minor key and Christmas Town in a major key. But then when he wanted to create some contrast with Halloween Town without using the major sound that he used for Christmas Town, he'd add some of that Phrygian stank in order to create some contrast with the citizens of Halloween Town who were in minor. And as far as the whole E minor thing goes, from what I've seen of Danny Elfman's work, he tends to write very chromatic music, which means that he tends to modulate a lot, which means that he changes key signatures in the middle of a piece most of the time. Which is what made Sally's song stick out to me so much, because it's the only song in the whole work that doesn't ever change key signatures. And even though Jack 
Jack is the only other individual character that goes to E minor from what I was able to find. I'm pretty sure there's a short part of This is Halloween that goes to E minor as well, which also happens to play while Sally's on screen. So maybe Elfman did this on purpose, maybe not. Maybe I was accurate in my analysis, maybe not. But remember, and this is always a possibility, maybe Elfman just made all these decisions for no reason other than he just thought it sounded good. So does that invalidate all these connections? I don't think so. If it sounds like and is written to fit the story, then there's probably an analytical musical explanation for it. And if Jack tried to be happy by adopting Christmas, but could only ever actually be happy when he found someone who understood him, and Elfman wanted to represent that feeling in the music, then we should be able to cut the music open, analyze it, and see why it felt like it fit. But fair warning, if you show this to anyone who knows a single thing about music theory, they will most likely just laugh at you. I just thought that these musical consistencies were really interesting, whether they were done on purpose and meant something or not. I've probably just spent way too much time in the town of Halloween. Man, I just love this movie. Well, that's going to be it for me for now. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. A special thanks to my Patreons for helping this channel stay afloat. And if you want to see what I'm up to, be sure to follow me on Twitter. And if you really like what I'm doing, consider supporting me on Patreon. But that's it for me for now. Thanks for watching. Points